Hi, my name is Pat O'Connor. I'm the broker owner of the Veritas Real Estate Group. We're located in Coral Springs, Florida. Today I want to talk about USDA loans. They're not well known. You may qualify for them when you don't qualify for any other loan and they're great loans. So it's the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and they either loan the money for these mortgages or they partially guarantee lenders to make these loans. And what partially guarantee means is they will reimburse the lender for some of their losses if there's a foreclosure or short sale or a dip in the market when property values decrease. These are for rural areas, but there's a caveat here. A rural area is defined as an area with 10,000 or fewer individuals living in it. And there are eligibility maps. However, these maps are only redrawn every 10 years. So you can Google and find the link. I'm in South Florida and I, you know, did a little bit of research last night and there are large areas in Florida that are eligible for these loans. Problem is people don't know about them. And you may have to hunt a little bit to find a mortgage company or a lender that does them. But they're, they're really good loans. So, you, you know, just around Orlando, those areas, Kissimmee and, and you know, those areas around Orlando, they're all el eligible. And one website estimated that 97% of the United States is eligible for these loans. Obviously not Manhattan or Seattle or Miami or Broward County, but you know, the, the non heavily populated areas at least 10 years ago, because these maps will change. So rural areas, the definition is 10,000 or fewer, but Maps are only redrawn every 10 years and lower income. But the income can change as the metro areas spread out. So what used to be strictly blue collar, lower income can now be the young professionals with the higher income. All right, so down payment, these are 100% financing. All right, so they're like the VA loan in that respect, but you don't have to be military to qualify for these. There is mortgage insurance like there is with an FHA loan or a conventional loan, but there's a one-time guarantee fee that can be paid at closing or added to the loan balance which is similar to FHA, but it's lower than FHA. There is also a monthly mortgage insurance guarantee fee that is mandatory. These are 100% financing if that's what you want, but even if you make a down payment, you are still going to have to make that monthly insurance payment, but it is not as much as the FHA. And what this does, the one-time closing cost guarantee fee, plus this monthly fee, it creates the pool of money that will go to reimburse lenders. This is the partially guaranteed part of this loan. It will, it will reimburse lenders for the losses that they incur on a sale. Not 100% like FHA does, but partially similar to the VA. The 
qualifying properties, these are single family homes. Unlike the other government loans, there's none of this. You can buy a duplex and live in one of the units. So the, there's only one way to get a multifamily property, and that is a separate loan program that you might want to look into. And it is called the multifamily housing loan. And it's for individuals who don't want to live in the unit, but they want to rent it out to the low income elderly farm workers or disabled tenants in the rural areas. And I believe this is a voucher program similar to Section 8 housing, but you'll have to double check on that if this interests you. <clears throat> Okay, borrower qualifications, <clears throat> low income. The adjusted gross income can't exceed 115% of the median area. Now, if you're the median income for the area, so if you're out in Timbuktu, the income may be low around you. But if you're in an area that has had the spread from a metropolitan area, and now you're surrounded, you know, that whole area is the young professionals who are IT people, they're making a lot of money. That median area income is gonna be high. And again, these maps are only redrawn every 10 years. So check in to this loan because the definition you know, 115% of 10 buck two is going to be less than 115%, I would assume, of maybe an Orlando area surrounding Orlando. Many of the lenders require a 640 or better credit score, but there may be exceptions to this. There's a debt to income ratio of 43% that if you are an individual who has already talked to a mortgage broker before, you've applied to loans before, this is familiar to you. Debt to income, your monthly um, payments that are scheduled, um, like car loans, you know, alimony, uh, things like that over your monthly income. So that needs to be 43% or lower. Seller concessions. This is what the seller can contribute to pay the buyer's closing costs. It's a 6% max, but in these loans, the appraiser may lower that amount. Because in rural areas with 10,000 or fewer people, there may not be a lot of properties being sold in a year, definitely within six months. So the appraiser may say the standard seller concession in this area is 4% or 1%. They're not contributing a lot towards the buyer's closing costs. So that's gonna be the maximum that the seller can contribute. And in, you know, in the MLS, it's like, what's the percent of seller concessions so they can look all this up it's on the record what are seller concessions for a particular uh recently closed sale that went through a realtor the appraisals again because if you're in a um very rural area with ten thousand or few people there may not have been a lot of recently closed sales so the condition of the home may be a more important estimate of home value than homes that sold two years ago or a year ago that may be, you know, around you. Loan features, 30 years. Unlike other loans that you are familiar with, FHA, VA, conventional, 
there is no adjustable rate mortgage available for a USDA loan. These are all also called farm loans. If you hear that term, that's what they're referring to. So this is fixed rate only. These loans can be assumed by individuals that meet the qualifications. And there is a 4% late fee. So check it out with your lender if you are in the market for a home. Google USDA eligibility map and you can look up yourself if you would be eligible for one of these loans and be able to get 100% financing. You know, just have a 640 credit score and, you know, let, let the loan originator take it from there. Okay, hope you learned something. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I upload a real estate video every Sunday. And I hope they're entertaining. You can like it. You can leave comments. But that's it for today. Thank you. Bye.